networking tools. So the second part we have with troubleshooting is we have to think about the tools we're going to use to do our troubleshooting and to do our maintenance and repair of our networks. So our physical cabling still serves as the critical backbone of our networks, even with wireless networking increasing. Many network problems can be reduced to proper installation if we do proper installation and configuration. Multiple hardware and software tools are available for us to help diagnose, isolate, and resolve network issues. It's important to understand the various tools, management devices, and protocols used by network technicians if you're going to be a good successful network technician or administrator. The first one we're going to talk about is an electrostatic discharge strap. This will allow static buildup that happens in your body to be discharged and grounded into an object instead of into the electrical components that would be damaged. Static discharge can be several thousand volts, but at a very low amperage. So you as a human won't even feel it or be hurt by it, but the circuit boards and components can be destroyed. These devices are about a dollar and fifty cents if you buy them on Amazon. They're very inexpensive. You put it around your wrist, you put that alligator clip onto something metal, and if you're an A-plus technician, you've already used these or been exposed to these in that exam. The next one we're going to talk about is a multimeter, which again was something we covered in the A-plus exam material. It's used with copper cabling to verify continuity, resistance, amperage, and voltage. It can be used to verify a cable is broken. Uh, it can be used to verify if a cable is broken or not by checking the value of the resistance. So in this case, we have somebody checking a power outlet and seeing that it is 119 volts, which is inside the, the range that we expect for the US, which is 115 to 125 volts. In Europe, we would expect 230 to 240 volts AC. Loopback plugs are used to connect the transmit pins or receive pins to test uh, inter network interfaces. So essentially what we're doing is we're just trying to make something go from on an Ethernet cable from pin 1 to 3 and 2 to 6, but on the exact same plug. So if you have a piece of network cable, you can actually make your own loopback plug by using it by putting one to, uh, excuse me, pins 1 to 3 and 2 to 6, just like we did in the bottom image there. If you have fiber, it's simply a loop back to go straight from the transmit fiber straight into the receive fiber. This is used with diagnostic software to test your Ethernet connectivity of a client to verify the card is in working order. The next tool we have is a crimper, and what crimpers are used for is to attach the plastic end to a cable. These blue crimpers here, they can do both RJ11 and RJ45, RJ45 being used for our networks, RJ11 being used for phones. It allows us to physically crimp that plastic connector to the end of the cable and allows us to make cables of any length that we want. Cable testers are used to verify continuity for each wire in the cable to ensure that there are no breaks in the cable. You can verify the pin out of the connectors by doing this. So in the example on the right, we have a cable going from the, the two parts of the connector, uh, and that is going to allow us to see that those, connect, those wires are properly configured or not. The next one we have is a cable certifier. And a cable certifier performs the same functions as a cable tester, but it does more for you. It can be used with the existing cable to determine the category of cable and test the throughput. So when you hook it up, it can actually tell you if this is a CAT3, CAT5, CAT5E, CAT6 cable. It identifies it based on the frequency range supported by the cable, and this determines the cable, the data throughput. Also, you can use this to determine the length of the cable and if the cable is crimped properly. So you might get an output like in the bottom right here from a cable, uh, cable certifier that will tell you, hey, your wire is a straight through wire. It went 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, etc. It'll also tell you the length of the cable, in this case, 10 feet. And so this is something that's very useful and you want to keep in mind for the exam why we use cable certifiers. A punch down tool is used to terminate wires on one of those punch down blocks we talked about, which are either 66 or 110 blocks, or a network jack, or a patch panel. So you have this little tool, as you can see with the arrow pointing out, that has a little knife at the end. And it's actually a spring-loaded tool, and what happens is you're actually going to push down and it's going to cut off the excess. As you can see in the bottom right when we're making a network jack, we're putting the, uh, the, the CAT5 cable into the jack and then cutting off the excess with that punch-down tool. Again, it's used to make 66-block, uh, 110-blocks, network jacks, and patch panel connections. A butt set is used to test equipment. It's used by um, telephone technicians to check for dial tone and verify that a call can be placed from a line. Very useful in telecommunications, uh, not as useful for us as network technicians unless you're working on DSL. You can connect this to a punch down block as well using alligator clips as shown here by this technician in the bottom right corner. A toner probe 
A toner probe is going to allow a technician to place a tone on one end of a connection and use the probe to audibly detect the wire connected to the tone generator. This is also known as a fox and a hound. The fox is the tone generator and the hound is the toner probe. As you can see here, we have a technician who has hooked up the cable into the toner, tone generator here in the middle. And then on the other end of the jack, he's using the probe to try to determine where that signal is. And it will make noise and light up based on where it is. It can be done like this with the tip, or it can be done like this using alligator clips to the send and receive pairs. A time dom domain reflectometer is used to locate breaks in a copper cable and provide an estimate of the severity and the distance of the break. So in this case, you would end up seeing that there is a break someplace in the wire, and it can actually tell you there's a break 10 and a half meters down this cable. And so you can find that. Very useful when you have buried cable because you need to know where to dig. The optical time domain reflectometer is very similar to the TDR. The only difference is it's used for fiber optic cables, and it does the exact same thing, but for fiber instead of copper. So OTDR is only used for fiber. TDRs are used for copper. Speed test sites. These allow you to verify the throughput from a local client to the internet. You download a large random file from the test server and then upload that same file back to the server. The server then takes the time of how long it took you to download and upload it and also does a ping to figure out your latency or delay. It'll determine your overall connection to the internet. As you can see here, I have in the upper left corner an example from speedtest.net. Uh, and this particular connection was doing 86.56 megabytes per second and had a 13 uh, millisecond delay. Throughput Tester. It is a network appliance that typically has multiple network interfaces that can generate high volumes of pseudo-random data for wired and wireless networks. So as you can see in the upper left corner, we have fiber connections here, we have Ethernet connections here, we have all sorts of different connections we can hook to. They're very useful when you're prototyping your networks to observe how network patterns, the network will perform under heavy loads using this test pattern. You can also use them on your production networks to determine the actual throughput of your existing network, but normally you're going to see these most often used in a prototype network before they get installed and users get on them. A bit error rate tester, it's used to generate a pattern at one end of a link and then receive it at the other end of the link to make sure that the pattern is being received and check for errors. So if I keep sending a known series of patterns, like for instance, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you would know what to expect. And if you got something that sounded like 0, 2, 8, 5, 4, 8, 9, you'd go, oh, I had a bunch of errors. Well, to calculate our bit error rate, we take the number of errors versus the number of bits transferred. And we want a very low number there, because it would be a fraction, we want a very low fraction. Uh, this is useful when troubleshooting interfa interfaces on a cable or a fiber. Uh, to verify that it's actually working properly. Next we have environmental monitoring. Environmental monitoring can send alerts if the temperature or humidity in a room changes above or below the configured thresholds. The devices can monitor temperature, humidity, power, and airflow. There are either installed devices as you can see on, on the left picture or handheld devices as you can see on the right picture. Protocol analyzers. These are also known as network sniffers. Traffic here can be captured from a network and then reviewed for problems in the communication between devices later on. These can be either a standalone device or simply a software running on top of a laptop, something like Etherreal or Wireshark. Wireshark is extremely common. It's a free program and works great. Just check out wireshark.org. Uh, and there's a picture of it there on the left side of what that output looks like. You can see we have our source and our destination IPs. We can see the protocol that's in use. We can see the type of traffic. And if you actually want to view like a TCP handshake, you can use Wireshark to view those three handshakes, the SYN, the SYNAC, and the AC, uh, or even pull out data. So if you look at something like Telnet, you can actually pull out people's usernames and passwords because they're being sent in the clear. Wireless Analyzer. This is a specialized software that can conduct wireless surveys to ensure proper coverage and prevent non-desired overlap. So on the left, we can see a, a simple wireless analyzer output where we can see that we have Bennett, Mr. Bennett's network here, and Bennett repeater here, and they're both on channel one. Here we have two networks that are on channel six that could interfere with each other, the Abruzzo and this numbered network. We also have Carousel that has this overlap, and you can see why we want that one, six, and 11, because it keeps those humps separate from each other, whereas this guy who is on number nine is now interfering in channel six and channel 11. Over here on the right, you can see a floor plan map. And this is actually uh, something called NetSpot, where it actually walks around and determines the hotspots of the area of where the strength and uh, weaknesses are of your network. 
and you can actually determine how strong or weak the network is. You can see the pattern that the technician walked around and where the strongest and weakest signals are. So you can determine where your hotspots are and where you need to put hotspots to get you a better coverage area. Looking glass sites allow users to connect to the routing information from a server's perspective. This is very useful if you're configuring BGP routers, otherwise they're not very useful. So if you're going to be an exterior router technician, you may want to look into some of these looking glass sites. Remote connectivity software. This enables you to access a network client via a PC that's located on a remote network. Some good examples of this are things like Microsoft Remote Desktop Connection, Real VNC, and Go to My PC. This can be very helpful for a uh, regular A plus technician because they can actually sit at their desk and remote into somebody else's workstation to help them with computer problems. For the network technician, it's not quite as effective because most of the time if they're having a network problem, they can't get on the network. And if they can't get on the network, you can't remotely access their computer. So sometimes it'll be useful for you, but as a network technician, it's a lot less useful uh, from that perspective. And that's our uh, basic networking tools. Again, there's lots of them that we cover in this uh, lecture. Make sure you understand them because you will get questions on those on the exam.